Well, welcome everybody. This is fantastic. It's the second uh, seri uh, series of Radical Thinking for Radical Times, and this is the second session of that series. Um, and I'd love to welcome you here from a very autumnal, uh, locked down Manchester. I think we all need some joy and inspiration in these times. And these webinars so far have definitely delivered on that. Um, I'm thrilled to see people from as far away as Sandbach and uh, even Reading, but also there are people from all over the world who signed up for this, so it's pretty impressive and fantastic. Uh, my name's Sally Hobbs. I'm the Vice Chair of the Pankhurst Trust, which I'm going to say a little bit about here in Manchester, and I was one of the founders of Queen Bee Key Coaching, um, so I'll just to say a few words about that. We delivered this series to spread the word about Queen Bee Coaching. It's a free leadership coaching service for women all across Greater Manchester. And we've got over 60 wonderful committed volunteers, all women, uh, many professional quote coaches, all experienced, who provide high quality coaching free to other women who want to make a difference and lead change. Uh, whether it's in their community, in the charity sector, corporate, public sector, private sector, whatever it is. We know that by providing this coaching, um, especially to women who face more disadvantages because of racism or educational uh, disadvantage in their background or whatever it might be, um, we're accelerating the skills and confidence of those women to lead and influence change in their world. And it can be life-changing, uh, as many of the women who've been coached will tell you. In fact, we've got an online uh, taster session for would-be clients of Queen Bee Coaching. So if you think that you might be a woman who is leading something, lives in Greater Manchester or works here and would like some coaching, do get in touch with us, do apply, but actually, if you're not sure and you want to find out more, some of our former clients will be talking and you'll be meeting some of the coaches online, the Zoom session, 3rd of November. There should be a link coming up now. So do use it, um, whatever you think, uh, come and join us. The other thing I wanted to say was that our charity manages the historic home where the suffragette movement began. And we also take direct action. That's what we're, that's what we're all about, really, uh, to support women who are challenging inequality and lack of power. And the Pankhurst Trust is also the largest specialist provider of domestic abuse services in Greater Manchester. Um, so this particular period during COVID times, we're, we're working with women who are experiencing things nobody else should ever have to, and the demand has gone through the roof. So we're asking you, if you can, for your help to uh, donate, if you can afford to. Um, this summer, for example, we've had over 300 referrals a month, compared to less than 200 this time last year. So we know that demand is going through the roof because of the conditions people, women are live facing in lockdown. Um, and refuge demand has doubled. Our staff are working extra hours to keep, and many unpaid actually, to keep women and children safe. Many women experiencing trauma and isolation are also in extreme poverty. Um, so they can't afford basics. So we need your support, please. Um, we need your support, if you can, to donate to the cost of these services. We will use the money directly to keep women and children safe. On that note, Kat, we're so grateful to today's sponsor, Music Magpie, for making a significant cash donation. If you can support them in supporting the, join them in supporting the Pankhurst Trust at this time, please do click on the link to open it in your browser that's appearing now and come back to it uh, after the talk to donate. If you each gave five pounds, that would really make a difference. 
So on today's chance for some inspiration and joy and positive thinking, I'm really looking forward to hearing from the amazing three women athletes today, talking about their uh, about being themselves, being ourselves, if only it was that easy. I'm also thrilled that we have partnered with the Women's Sports Trust for this series of events, the national charity raising the visibility and increasing the impact of women's sport, and who have brought together this fantastic group of women athletes. Please do put any questions to our athletes today in the chat box below with a queue at the front so we can find them easily. Use the chat box to say hello, comment, generally get involved. And do please make sure that this continues to feel a warm and safe space for us all, all us feminists on the call. You can follow this talk on social media under hashtag Queen B Radical Talk and on all the socials as at Queen QBC Pankers, get that right eventually. There will be another talk too in October on the 22nd, which will be our third and final one of this fantastic series. So do come back again for that. And you can catch up with the first one on YouTube or Spotify too. And we'll be putting this one on afterwards. Thank you too to one of our participants, Moira, for pointing out that we really do need to make this accessible to uh, women with hearing impairments. So we are looking at this and working on it to subtitle or sign them in future. Now, let me introduce our interviewer, Sue Richardson. In her 20 year, hello Sue. In her 20 year career with KPMG, Sue Richardson has risen to become a partner in the North Deal advisory team as well as being the firm's head of retail for the North region. And she has done it while being authentically herself. The only partner in the North Deal Advisory Service who works part-time and one of the few women leaders in her sector. So I can't think of a better interview for today's session on being yourself. Over to you, Sue. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sally, um, and it is a real privilege to, to be with everyone today. Um, we've got some fantastic women who are going to be joining us on the panel, um, and it is a, it's a real honour to be involved with, uh, with this. I know from, a, from personal experience, as Sally said, you know, I work in an environment where um, it is quite male dominated, and in a 20 year career, um, getting coaching from a lady who was a truly excellent coach about seven years ago was probably the most important eight hours that I spent in that time and have um, really enabled me to, um, to remain true to myself whilst progressing in what I'm doing. Um, so um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our panel members, um, three exceptional women and we'll be learning more about them over the course of the next half hour. So we have Naomi who is a seven time British champion in triple jump and as well as representing her country in international athletics championships, Naomi pursues her passion for media and presented for the BBC at the 2019 World Athletics Championships in Doha. She's also appeared on BBC News television and radio discussing Brexit. Um, no interesting topic to cover uh, to cover there, Naomi, definitely. Uh, we've also got Emily, who is a Commonwealth and European hockey bronze medalist. Um, she was inspired on her sporting journey after growing up just 20 minutes down the road from, from the amazing Olympic Park in London. I remember those 2012 Olympics so well. Uh, and Emily now represents Great Britain and England. And she also presents a successful podcast called Cuppa and Anatta. Uh, so really looking forward to talking to, to you, Emily, and certainly who, you know, who could forget the way the nation got behind the women's hockey team back in uh, 2016 in Rio? That that was uh, that was that was fantastic. And then last, lastly, Sasha. So she's an international netball player, 
and captain of her club, Saracens Mavericks. Sasha has also got her own company called Solo Sessions that provides netball coaching masterclasses and new tutorials, which I'm definitely going to be taking up um, after this event. I've just bought my daughter a, a netball post to go in the garden. Um, and she also gives back to her London community by offering young people access to free weekly sessions. So welcome to, to all of you. Um, the topic of today's discussion is authenticity. So how can we bring our whole selves to our life and work? And is that something you feel you've managed to achieve or are you still working on it? So uh, Emily, can we start with you? Yeah, of course. Thank you, So um, I'm really delighted to be involved in this. Um, I think uh, with regards to accepting yourself and being yourself within the working environment or for myself on the hockey pitch, it's still something that I'm very much working on. Um, I think hockey is a sport that is traditionally played in a white private school. Um, you know, it's very much a, a white background sport. And actually, for me growing up, I went to a state school in Essex and the the difference in maybe facilities resources that I had in terms of my hockey development growing up was something that I really had to kind of accept and admit that maybe it's not going to be the same as what some of my teammates may have um, experienced themselves so growing up I think you know accepting my background not necessarily being the same as my teammates was something that I had to accept but um, as well you can probably tell I've, I've got quite a strong accent and uh, as an Essex girl, I always have that label tagged along alongside uh, my my hockey my hockey playing. Um, I'm always known as the Essex girl. I sound completely different to all my other um, Team GB hockey uh, teammates. Uh, I kind of stand out in that in that respect. But it's something that I'm proud of, and I think it's something that, especially when I was growing up, I did realise that I was slightly different to the other players playing the sport that I love but actually it's kind of embracing that and um, I'm a big believer that if everyone sounded the same looked the same were the same the world would be a very boring place so um, it's something that I'm still working on but um, as time has gone on I think that's something that I've really embraced and being authentic. Thanks Emily. Um, Naomi how do you bring your whole self to your life and work? So for me I've always had like a huge passion in media probably longer than I've had a passion for athletics. I started athletics quite late um, in comparison to others. I started when I was around 16 triple jumping um, but media is always something that I've always wanted to do whether it's been in front of the camera or behind the camera but I also had a lot of people kind of say to me why don't you just wait until you retire? You can do all that media stuff after you've retired, but it's something that I love so much that I don't want to wait. Um, so I think for me, it was kind of creating, doing something that people haven't really done before, which is kind of presenting alongside doing the athletics. And a lot of people are thinking, oh, well, you're not, you obviously can't do well at both, but I want to kind of prove people, prove people wrong and show that you can follow more than one passion and be successful at both. Um, so I'd say that it definitely has been a struggle, especially there's been times where I've competed, maybe I've done so well, and a fan has come up to me and gone, see, it's because you're doing all that media stuff, if you just focused on athletics and things like that. So sometimes that gives me a bit of self-doubt, but if I believe that this is what I'm passionate about and this is what I want to do, I think that it should work out. Um, so I'd say I'm working on it, but it's been successful so far. That's great. And I think, Naomi, that's something, um, you know, I can really identify with in the corporate world. Um, other people talking to you about how they think your career should progress because that's the way they've done it. And, and you feeling very strongly you want to do something different. So that's a you know, great inspiration, hopefully, for, for lots of people um, here today. So, Sasha, how about you? Hi, thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, for me, um... I think, well, I've always been quite a confident person. I'm like quite energetic and, you know, I'm the person to like bust a move and show my personality at different times. And I feel like that I genuinely am that person all the time. Um, has it been hard? Um, not so much, but I guess the, the, the thing that I would say I'm growing at right now would be the, because I'm always so up 
just knowing that there's a you're allowed to be down at times as well and um and just kind of showing that kind of vulnerable vulnerability and I feel like that's something that's definitely coming I could give you an example um just I remember that I was going through something especially like you know performance wise on, on the court so this is definitely sports specific um and you know it was it wasn't going right and things went you know week after week things were just getting harder and harder and you know it started to not um it started to like have an effect on training as well and I felt like it was, you know, instead of just being that person that's just going to hide behind, like, I need to speak. So I spoke to, I found the confidence to speak to the person that basically picks me, the coach, <laughs> and, you know, and, and have that dialogue and just tell her, you know, this is what I'm going through. Um, you know, I don't know what it is that I need, but right now this is happening. And I felt like that was the first time me and being real kind of authentic to myself in a sense where I wasn't hiding anymore. Like I was struggling and I was just doing it by myself. Um, so it was really important for me to just have that dialogue and she had my back and I, you know it's funny because you kind of think oh no I've just done that and you know maybe you know now I've just like mashed myself up like it's not going to be a good thing but she genuinely had my back we had solutions we had things to do um, and and then I came out the other side a, a much better be, much better for it so um, it's definitely a work in progress I'm definitely not there yet I, I'm usually happy but if I am sad I'd like to think that I could speak on it. That's great. Thank you very much. Um, so I guess the next thing I just wanted to explore with you all was, was whether there have been periods in your life where you felt like you weren't being yourself um, and how did that impact you and what was stopping you from being yourself? So um, Naomi, could you maybe answer that one? Yeah, so when I was basically I used to make loads of videos on YouTube I used to make music videos when I was like 11 with my little brother and things like that and I loved it and this was as I said I've always been passionate about media so I was so excited to do it but then when I went to school um, I think it was an ICT lesson some boy like told everyone and they put it all on the screens and all laughing at me and suddenly I was so ashamed of something that I loved so much so I like basically as soon as I got home I like privated all the videos so no one could see them and I was like I'm never making a video again I'm never going on YouTube and I'm not doing this um, and it took like a lot of time and courage to try and convince myself that people aren't going to laugh when I put myself out there um, so I think that was definitely a time when I struggled to be myself and I'm so glad that I didn't listen and keep that. Like, sometimes, even though it happened when I was so young, it can stay with you. And But I actually didn't let that stop me from um, continuing. So when I was a bit older, I was like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm just going to do it. If people laugh, they laugh, but someone might like it. And the person who liked it happened to be the person from BBC, which ended up being the reason why I got to present for them. So it all worked out in the end. But um, yeah, that was definitely something that was quite hard to deal with. That's a great story. Good moral there that being yourself um, hopefully pays uh, hopefully pays dividends. I think Emily, you you talked about how you know in your team you're you're quite you're quite different. Um, you know, have you as, as being part of that group felt felt the need to to not be yourself? Yeah, I think it's a really good question. Um, you know, I think especially growing up, I was very aware of how I spoke and how that was completely different to everyone else. And I mean, it did go through my mind, oh, should I be, should I be talking like I am right now? Should I be trying to, you know, put on a posture accent to try and fit in a little bit more? But it's interesting that you touch upon, you know, being in a team sport, I don't know whether the other guys um, think it in terms of, you know, elite sport is not necessarily straightforward. Uh, with the highs come the lows. And especially in those low times, whether it's, you know, you, you pick up an injury or you have in a team sport, you have a bad performance, whether that's individually or collectively, you kind of have to have that poker face, the, the brave face and trying to remain consistent because actually you throwing your toys out the pram if you have a bad performance yourself, but yet the team played well and the team may have won, that's only you know a bad thing for the team on a whole so sometimes that's really hard to deal with um also you know as I said when you're injured so I'm currently injured right now um but it's one of those where you you go into Bisham Abbey, Bisham Abbey every day and you've got to you know be as professional as you can you can't feel sorry for yourself because that might have a 
detrimental impact on your teammates. Um, so I think you get that with all elite sport. You probably get that in all the workplaces in, in the country. You know, you might have a bad day, but actually you can't rest on your laurels and feel sorry for yourself because actually that might have an impact on those around you. So I've definitely come to terms with, you know, putting on a brave face uh, more often than not um, recently with my injury. But I think it's part and parcel of the, the working environment that you're in. Thanks, Emily, and hope your injury gets better soon. Um, Sasha, how about how about you? Girl, Emily, I think we got similar stories. <laughs> I'm only saying that because uh, firstly, yeah, I'm from London and to be honest, like I probably sound, I don't know how, how I'd say this, but I sounded a, much different to how I sound now. I think this is, I think I actually have kind of changed in order to kind of fit, if that makes sense. So I still, I'm still, I still talk to myself, but slang words and things like that they do not come out of my mouth <laughs> so you know in a sense where I've grown in that sense but um again with you again um I think the brave face thing really resonates with me because uh man life's been mad but I've I've you know I've ruptured my Achilles tendon I've torn my ACL you know one of them took nine months the other took 14 months to get back and throughout that whole time as me saying I'm you know I'm a really positive kind of happy person it was really tough to still find the positivity within within those journeys and seeing everyone do what you absolutely love and you just want to get out there and you want to train you want to play and to you know to you have to be brave and still like support the team um whilst you're suffering is a really tough gig um definitely taught me resilience um and so i had to find the love in the journey that was being had in rehab or, you know, finding the love, finding just switch, fine tuning everything. And I think, um, it, it, yeah, it must, it must be like that in the workplace at different times. Maybe you don't get what you, um, what you, you know, your targets or whatever it is that you need. And you still need to be able to find the love and the passion as to why you're doing it in the first place, especially if you're in a job that you love. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna say that that that's been pretty tough, um, putting on that brave face. But at the same time, I think I feel like I've learned from it and grown from that experience. Thanks, Sasha, and, and yeah, I'm sure a lot of people will recognise that. And resilience is a word I think that's been used a lot over the last sort of six, seven months, given uh, you know the, the environment we're in at the moment. Um, so yeah, more important than ever, definitely. Um, so. Do you think it's more difficult for women to be their authentic selves than it than it is for men? I think Emily, have you got any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think I mean it's the question on everyone's lips right now, isn't it? It's the equality factor within society that we're all striving towards. Um, I think you know in every environment, no matter whether that's you know sport, whether that's in the workplace, I think you're always going to get a kind of minority um and you know as I touched upon in terms of my my personal point of view um the minority may be you know the number of female head coaches for example you know it's very male dominated at the top of the sport um and that goes all the way down through to you know as I touched upon the the maybe inequality within um opportunities within schools within state schools and private schools there's still the the um, inequality there but I think you I think in every situation within society there will always be kind of that minority and that overcoming the stereotype whether it be you know as you touched upon Sue in your in your background you know it's a very male dominated environment and you're always maybe trying to prove yourself and and actually I think as sports uh, women, we're doing exactly the same. So as, um, you know, myself, Sasha, Naomi, being part of the Women's Sport Trust Unlocked programme, it's trying to, you know, celebrate women's sport for what it is and make it on par with our um, male counterparts, which in society at the moment, I don't think we get the equal coverage, the equal attention, um, the investment that maybe women deserve. And that's similar within the workplace as well in terms of the number of women in leadership roles, for example. Um, it's just purely not enough. Um, so I think 
to answer your question, yes, I think women definitely have to work harder, whether they have to, you know, prove themselves that little bit more, work that little bit harder to get to the place where they want to get in life. Um, I think definitely. But hopefully there'll there'll be that time where we live in a society where women are seen as um, equal and, and, and what we're worth. Thanks, Emily. And yeah, you know, it. when I met um, you guys earlier this week, I, I was really struck actually by the parallels between the world of sport and, and the world of business. Um, uh, you know, I, I by no means am any sort of sportswoman, but actually there, there's so much I think that I can learn from you and your experiences. Um, Sasha, what do you think? Do, do you think that it's harder for women to, to be their authentic selves? Um, do you know, I really do firstly agree with, with what you've just said, Emily. Um, like, I think you've hit the nail on the head, but at times I think sometimes it's hard just because I think it's like the fear. There's like a fear of, of being judged. There's like a fear there as to why, you know, why you might not take it on, if that makes sense. Um, so I, 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 what I, what I love is bravery and people stepping up to the plate and being like, actually, I don't care what's been before me. Let me be the first. I love that, that mentality. And it's the same thing of being on, on court. Like when I'm, when I'm performing, it's the same thing. You want to be the best you every time you step out and you want to find yourself striving for new and better, bigger things. And I feel like that's exactly the same um, when there is in inequality. So, um, bravery definitely and not to be afraid of of going for it I think that's such an important message thanks Sasha um I think be, being brave is it, it is such an important part of being authentic because it it, it it can be hard um Naomi what do you think about this um, it's interesting because I'm just reflecting when I was in year 10 um I was diagnosed with ADHD but the reason why it took until year 10 is because as a woman, as a girl, it's often not noticed or seen because girls are quite good at, um, I'd say women in general are just quite good at, say for instance, if you're angry, if you're frustrated, you're better at hiding it. So while the boys would be like going, you know, flipping tables, being really angry, I would be dealing with it internally whilst putting on a smile. And I think it's kind of similar to that brave face and the way that women often have to be, especially as sports women, when you lose, if you show that you're upset, suddenly you're this crazy, emotional, angry woman. Whereas if a man does that, it's kind of, well, it's, you know, kind of a given. So I think that sometimes it is hard to be authentic because you're often, you know, it could be in a meeting, I guess, in a workplace and somebody's just saying something and you're getting interrupted and you can't ever show that anger or something like that. So yeah, I think it can be hard as a woman because you're often expected to act in a certain way all the time. And it goes unnoticed with the emotions that you do feel. And if you're too emotional, then that's wrong. So there's a lot of, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of things that come with being a woman. But um, yeah, I'd say that that's been a tough part of being authentic. That's really interesting that because I know I've had feedback through the course of my career saying that I'm, I'm too emotional and you, you need to learn not to be. Um, but I, I think that's one of the things that makes me different. Um, and so uh, you but being true to yourself when when a lot of people are telling you that that you should change I think is um you know it is is really really tough um so what advice would you give to others about bringing their whole self to everything they do um should we start with you Sasha this time yeah um that's a good question <laughs> firstly find you like what like know exactly who you are and obviously that's really tough to say as well because um it, you know that is definitely a journey that you, you're going through yourself and finding yourself but like what is it that you're passionate about what are the things that you're um that you that you hold on to what are your values like um are you a happy-go-lucky person or like you don't have to pretend to be that person if you're not that person like just just literally like know what you are enough and whatever you bring to the table is enough so for me um again happy smiley jokey dancing type person I love to interact with people I'm going to make sure I do that all the time I'm not going to shy away from it if I do I feel funny like it doesn't feel right for me 
So I need to make sure I put myself in situations where I can be like that or just feel comfortable enough to do that. Um, and like, even in the network environment, like I think to myself, you know, th there's so many, there's so many women, there's so many girls, there's, that we're all competing. Um, how can I be myself? Well, I'm, I am myself, I train hard, I work hard like everyone else. The difference is I might like to put music on at the start because that's gonna get me hype. And so I might, you know, make the whole team do a dance with me because that's what I enjoy. But I know that they enjoy it too, but I had to work that out. It was a journey, but it worked. And so I felt that that was a way of bringing me into that environment. So it's just about, I guess, finding what it is and what you can bring to a group company, what it is and like kind of expressing it in a way that's, that people can really take to it and understand that that is you. We love you for you, keep being you. <laughs> Yeah, that, that is really, really good advice, Sasha. Definitely. Thank you. Um, Emily, how about you? What would your advice be? Yeah, it's, it's a good question because I think if it had an easy answer, I think we'd all be smashing life and uh, it'd be, it'd be pure straightforward. But for me, very similar to what Sasha said, actually, um, for me, an important thing is finding your why. And, and finding your inner strength and your super strength with that. So in finding your why, like what is your reason to get up and go to work uh, every single day? What is your reason to step on that hockey pitch every single day, whether it's come range, sunshine, you know, it's, it's what, what is the reason for you doing that? And in terms of the super strength, it's everyone is unique and everyone is different, but everyone has that super strength that makes them unique to other people. So whether that be, you know, you're a really good communicator, you're a really good leader, you're, you're like myself, Sasha, Naomi, that we're quite bubbly, positive people, you know, everyone kind of has their super strengths, but actually you need to bring that to the table. And, and kind of what Sasha said, you know, be unapologetic about it, own it. You know, there's a reason why we're all in that environment we all find our reason why we're there, but also realise your strength that you bring to the situation and just own it. That's brilliant. Thanks, Emily. I like the idea of everyone having a, a superhero strength, definitely. And Naomi, how about you? What, what's your advice? Um, sometimes for me, personally, I struggle with comparing myself to others, especially when it comes to achievements. Now in my event, I'm always gonna be competing against other women, which is strange because in life, I always like to team up with women and like build each other up. But in my event, we're competing, we, we, want, we want to be better. So it's sometimes hard to make that difference. And I'm like, okay, I don't need to compare myself to other people. If they're doing better, maybe it's just their time right now. Um, <laughs> and maybe my time will come later. Um, and I also think it's important to know that you don't know everything and it's okay to ask for help because that's something that I've kind of struggled with as well. Sometimes, whether it's in the work, whether it's in, when I was talking about Brexit, I was like, I don't know what to say about Brexit. Like, I, and then I thought, you know what? It's okay, I'm gonna say, I don't know. And I said that live on BBC News, I don't know. And then suddenly I had so many people going, do you know what? I don't know either. Naomi had it spot on, I'm confused as well. And that being authentic sometimes is not knowing and, um, I think you should be okay with that sometimes. You don't have all the answers and it could be okay. Yeah, I, I think that's definitely right, Naomi. Uh, th there's probably a few in the cabinet, I suspect, don't know about Brexit either, if I'm honest. You're definitely not alone. Um, okay, um, I think j just before we wrap up, one, one last question for everyone um, around how important it is to be your authentic selves to inspire others. Uh, so, uh, Emily, can I ask you that first? Yeah, it's, it's a good question, actually. I think, um, you know, being part of a team sport is very much a group, you know, effort. And we're all working really hard day in, day out to improve personally, improve collectively, basically with the overall aim of, you know, being the number one team uh, in world hockey. And it's very similar to within the workplace as well kind of you know you can have a real big impact on those around you by just knuckling down working hard doing your best uh, being positive just doing what you do every single day um, and I think for me it's I take 
greater pride in kind of helping to break down barriers as well. Um, so I've touched upon, obviously, hockey being predominantly played in, you know, public private schools um, and, and, you know, women's sport getting the recognition that it deserves. Um, and I think finding the authenticity for everyone within society is hugely important because it can inspire others around. And um, throughout lockdown, I, I started up my um, Instagram live series, Cupper and the Natter. And it was a weird and wonderful idea. And it went, it went kind of from strength to strength. But the main reason why I wanted to start Cupper and Natter was to bring some positivity and lighthearted fun and, you know, to help inspire other people through the achievements of the incredible sports women um, that I was joined by on Cupper and Natter. And I think that's really important because no matter what your background is, no matter what you do day to day, everyone can have that impact and the positivity that they can give to other people. Um, and it's something that I live my life by really every single day trying to have a positive impact on everyone else because I think it's an easy thing to do and everyone can do the same. Fantastic thanks Emily and Sasha how about you? There we go <laughs> sorry I'm all chatting away um, again similar to, to, to Emily um, I feel like for myself you know, before I, I, you know, I love being creative and I love being um, myself and doing stuff in front of the camera. Again, I had set up solo sessions to inspire. I felt like that was me being authentic to myself. That was me stepping away from my team environment. So to have like YouTube videos and things like that, as soon as lockdown happened, it was like the place to be. Like every netballer seemed to go to that page and be inspired and sending their, um, sending their videos and things like that. And it made me feel like I was being my true self and I'd done it. I'm glad I'd done it before and not just waited on it and sat on the idea. I was happy I'd done it because then there was, big, it was needed. It was, it, there was a need for it and people were inspired by it. So I'm so pleased that, you know, I went with my gut feeling when it was time. So anyone out there that if you've got something in mind, you really want to go for it, I would say definitely go for it. The time, there's no better time than now. Thanks, Sasha. And um, Naomi, how about you? Um, I think for me, um, yeah, I definitely agree with Emily and Sasha about putting yourself out there and doing the things that kind of no one's even done before, but just, you know, going for it anyway. And for me, I think it's kind of pairing the vulnerability with the things that you're passionate about. So like for me, it was the, with the BBC, like going to Doha to present for World Champs, like it was an amazing opportunity, but that was off the back of not being selected to compete at World Champs because I didn't get the standard. But I think because I was quite open about that, um, I, I think it do, makes it a little bit more inspiring. Sometimes when you show the struggle as well as the thing that's positive, I think a lot more people can kind of relate with it. So I think sometimes being authentic is definitely being positive, but I think it's also talking about the negatives because everybody goes through these negative times. And I think that is part of life. Like uh, an authentic life is one that has ups and downs. Um, and I think all of us have shared it through injuries and everything, but we've still managed to have success from that. So I think that even if things right now don't feel like they're going too well, I think to, to stay positive for the future and to know that we all have these vulnerable and terrible times in our lives, but it will get better. So I think that's another way of being authentic as well. No, I, I totally agree with that, Naomi, definitely. Um, certainly in my experience as well, also to, to know it's all right to ask for help when, when things are, are difficult. Um, that was, uh, yeah, that, that was some great advice there. So thank you. Um, we've, we've got a question from the audience, if that's okay. So Moira has asked, um, does being authentic include speaking up for other women when you feel that they might not be able to speak up for themselves? I think, Sasha, can I come to you on that one? Yeah, no, that's fine. I, I do think there's a power in that. There's a power in being able to, to notice that someone is struggling to notice that you can be that voice of reason, that that voice that people need to hear. So um, yeah, I, I definitely, I feel like there's power in that for sure. Um, not all the time because people need to learn as well. What you might offer is that advice to allow them to do what they're doing, to allow them to speak up, give them that 
confidence that they can do it. Um, there's power in both of those. And I think whatever method you go by, um, yeah, definitely like, explore them. And Naomi, what do you think? I'm so sorry, my mind just went blank of the question. Uh, no, don't worry, that's <laughs> fine. So uh, just being authentic means speaking up for other women who, um, who might not be able to speak up for themselves. Yeah, I definitely think that that is part of being authentic. And I think we've seen that a little bit with, you know, with the Black Lives Matter movement and everything that's kind of come with lockdown. I think sometimes if, for instance, if I'm trying to explain something, um, somebody might not understand, but then say a white person explains it, it might make it a bit better having somebody who's kind of on the, on the, ta on the team in a way. Um, sometimes it is hard to speak up um, on your own, you feel like you're the only one, but if a lot of people come in numbers to speak up about something, um, it makes more of a difference. And I think that's where a lot of power kind of comes from when people kind of come together rather than kind of trying to do things on their own. Um, I think there's a lot more power in, in volumes of people speaking. So I definitely saw that when a lot of people started to see um, problems in society and speak up about it and read about it and um, just to even ask questions. Um, I think that's definitely a way that um, showed authenticity and, and helped a lot of people. Oh, I think that's definitely right. I think, um, I guess what, what the experience over the summer has shown us is that it's, it's not really enough just to stand by and watch things happen. It, it's important that, that people get involved and, and speak out a bit more. Um, Emily, what, what do you think about um, standing up for other women who might not be able to stand up for themselves? Yeah, it's, I mean, fantastic question. Um, it's actually something that I feel quite strongly about. Um, I'm very much a person that loves celebrating other people's achievements or successes or anything really. And, and I think that kind of comes from within because it takes a lot for you to kind of give yourself that reassurance sometimes that okay I'm doing all right here or okay I've done well in this environment or uh, you know I deserve this this um achievement like anything it kind of takes a lot from within to have that confidence within yourself um but actually the reassurance to kind of continue to do what you do and you know it's it's interesting actually what Sasha said about not doing it all the time because I've never thought about that and actually yeah, I'm a, I'm, I'm a positive person and always, you know, crediting others when necessary, but maybe I need to rein it in slightly sometimes, but it's one of those, it's, it's true. And actually that's kind of a learning that I've come over time to try and, um, try and learn to do a little bit more for myself and not rely on that reinforcement from other people that maybe I give out. Thanks, Emily. And I think we've probably got time just to squeeze in one more audience question. And actually that, that this ties in a little bit, Naomi, to what you were talking about, about lots of people speaking up. So what what should we be saying to our to our sons, our brothers, our male partners, our, our male friends to, to to help them help us to deliver this change? Do you, do you have any thoughts on that, Naomi? Um, I think it starts off with, you know, just education. I think when you're younger, I remember when I was younger, I thought certain jobs were for certain genders. So I didn't think that women could be space, space um, astronauts or women could be um, even just put things like postman. I thought it was only um, men who could do it. Something as, you know, regardless of what job it was, I just thought it was gendered. So I think it, it starts off with education. Um, so I think, yeah, just trying to show your, your children or your brothers different role models in different sectors. If you're going to show them a fantastic doctor, maybe show them a female doctor as well as a male doctor and just things like that. Because when they see it, they'll think, oh, and then when they grow up, they'll, it is not really so, so much of a barrier. And I hope that more young people will start to go into different sports and go into science and be, wanting to be in business and don't think that's just, that's just a man's world. Um, so hopefully sports women can inspire young women, but also business women can inspire young um, boys and young girls to grow up and know that it's limit the possibilities are limitless. And Emily, what, what do you think we can be saying to our, our male relatives and, and friends and colleagues? 
Yeah, I think um, brilliant what Naomi's just said, actually. I think um, within sport, it's very easy for you to kind of be categorised in, in terms of what sport you should maybe play based on your gender. So, for example, at schools, girls tend to play hockey, netball, you know, rounders, whilst the boys are playing, you know, rugby, football, cricket. Um, and actually, that's something that starts from a young age. And actually, it, should, it shouldn't be the case, in my opinion. I think every, every child should have the same opportunity to play hockey, to play netball, to play rugby, football, uh, no matter what their gender is. Um, and I feel quite fortunate because I grew up with two older brothers and a sports mad dad that, you know, loved every sport. And whether that was me playing football with my brothers in the garden or, um, or hockey or cricket, it was very much encouraged. And actually, I think it's, it's now's the time for our sons, our dads, our uncles, uh, just our male counterparts to be just really, really supportive of the case and that gender shouldn't be a barrier um, no matter what environment or or workplace you're in. And I think as well, like you see fantastic role models such as, you know, Andy Murray, Justin Rose, that are huge advocates for women's sport, for example. And they are, you know, kind of trailblazers in that respect. And I think in society now, um, we're getting to that stage where this shouldn't be continued to be talked about. Um, and actually, you know, now's the time for the change to happen. Thanks, Emily. Yeah, I think Andy Murray is a you know is a real role model in that regard, isn't he? Um, Sasha, I'll come to you last, if that's okay. Have you got any thoughts about um, what we can be asking of our male friends and colleagues? Yeah, similar to what Naomi was saying about education um, and letting them know that we, well, showing them what it is that we can do and that there is no limit. And what's really interesting is obviously netball is very female. It is like, like that's what netball prides itself on because for so many years, it's always been about a man's world. So this is the one thing that, you know, as a, as a netballing uh, person, we just like, oh my gosh, we, this is ours. This is ours. <laughs> but at the same time, it's really lovely to see men being like, can we, like, can we play? And we've got men's leagues and, and you know, now we're saying, oh yeah, we do have men leagues as well, as well. Like, you know what I mean? For the first time in a sense, it feels like, you know, we have this too. So I think, you know, we've got to get to a point where of course it's just generally, um, equal but at the same time when you've got something you want to kind of hold on to it um showing people that you know we do train really hard we you know there's images now on tv that shows that you know you can you can win gold medals that you um you know you work literally just as hard as the men and just showing them that the skills of the game isn't what you think about when you say school netball it's education and I think as long as we can show the guys that we can be just as good if not better at times then they need to get that we need to get the respect that we deserve. <laughs> I wholeheartedly agree with that, Sasha. That was a great question from Kim. I think um, uh, I did a, a sort of netball social with my team. So we, we had a, a netball competition, and every single one of the men who took part sort of said, I had no idea what a hard sport that was. I, I think they thought it was going to be really easy. So, uh, so yeah, lovely to hear that, uh, that story. Right. Well, it, it, I mean, it. It's been such a privilege to, to hear from um, you three, like hugely inspirational sports women. Um, I've really enjoyed our discussion. Um, I, I'm going to pass back to you now, Sally. I think um, you're going to, to say a few words and, um, and sum up our session. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Well, that's pretty hard to sum that up. That was absolutely fantastic. Um, thank you so, so much to uh, Naomi and to Sasha and to Sue as well and to Emily. I mean, it was, it's been absolutely fantastic uh, hearing that. And I've got, it's pure gold and I've got so many thoughts in my head. Um, but I think the main thing is that you've all talked about being being able to be yourself but actually spreading positivity and joy um, and that's pretty wonderful so I hope everyone has enjoyed it as much as I have and thank you 
Thanks again to, to Music Magpie, our sponsors, and to Alliance Manchester Business School for their tech support for this series. And thank you to the Women's Sports, uh, Sports Trust for working with us, and particularly to Laura Weston, who brought together Unlock, the group of athletes that we've been listening to. If you can afford to, please do donate to us at the Pankhurst Trust. We really do need your help. The women we support need your help. Um, it's hard times. Uh, you can save the chat, as Claire Marie said at the beginning of the call, to get the links that were mentioned on the call, or open the link now so you can come back to it after the call. And before you go, do remember to come back next time. It's on the 27th, 22nd of October, sorry. So we've got a week's gap uh, at 11.30 again, and that will be episode three of series two. So more fantastic uh, inspirational athletes. It's called Resilience, fall down nine times, get up 10. Uh, and it's with an England, England basketballer, Siobhan Pryor, and Olympic medal winning athlete, Marilyn Okoro. So you can sign up now if you can open the link, you can come back later. Again, I really hope you've enjoyed this, enjoyed this as much as I certainly have. Thank you for choosing Queen Bee webinar today. Uh, stay in touch with us, of course, all social media as at QBC Pankhurst. And we hope you are inspired. Thank you. Now, as we close, there's a short video from our sponsors as well, Music Magpie. Um, and I'll hand over to that. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Steve Oliver. I'm the co-founder and group CEO of Music Magpie. We're all delighted and proud to be again supporting Queen Bee Coaching and the Pankhurst Trust as a talk sponsor in this second series of brilliant events to talk about and celebrate women in sports. As we've rapidly grown the business at Magpie over the years from its origins in my converted garage in Stockport to the business we have today of over 750 people, We've always been aware of the importance of diversity and inclusion, but we're really upping our game to ensure that we have it at the centre of our magpie values. Those values help us define being a magpie and are led by the two mantras that magpies care and magpies seek to make a difference, both of which I've always told my three amazingly talented daughters I believe to be at the very heart of life. It's with this spirit that we look to the particular issue of gender equality and all of us trying to make a difference. Magpie is very proud to say that two of our last three main board appointments have been ladies, including our incredibly talented group HR and talent director, Rachel, and she'll be very embarrassed I said that. So thank you to my dearest of friends, Sarah David, who's helped organize this event, for inviting me to be part of these events. Thank you to another dear friend of mine and the business, Sue Richardson from KPMG, for chairing the discussion. And thank you to the three amazingly talented sportswomen for taking part in the event. I hope everybody enjoys it.